Hello everyone. In part one and part two of this series, I had shown the authorizations required to launch the Fury Launchpad and also access the tiles. So in this series, in this video, I'll show you how to provide authorizations so you can run the SAP Fury application itself. Uh, so I had mentioned before that what we have is a hub deployment. So I have the front end server and the back end server on two separate systems. So the approach is slightly different if you're using embedded in embedded it's uh, a lot more easier in front end server you have to go and set these uh, permissions in these two separate systems okay so this is my url for the fury launchpad and if i have to access an app all i would have to do is uh, remove the uh, remove anything that uh, that's after the pound symbol and then i would put in the target mapping. So in this case, uh, my target mapping, the intent is uh, sales order and track status. So I re replace the shell dash home with the sales order dash track status. And then I would be able to access the Fury app. So let me go to the Fury uh, uh, Chrome browser and let's uh, try and access the Fury app itself. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tracks, uh, the intent sales order slash track status, uh, hit uh, refresh. The app opens up, uh, but when I click go to actually run the application, uh, you will see that I get all these error messages. And you can see that I don't have access to all these OData services forbidden and so on. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix this. And uh, the way we need to fix it is uh, go to the Fury Apps Library. And in the Fury Apps Library, the first thing it says is uh, the UI5 application that we are trying to run is uh, SO Track Status S1. Uh, so this is already activated in my front end server, uh, but just uh, to make sure. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go to my front end server. I'll use the transaction code SICF and I will put in this uh, application name right here and I will hit execute and you will notice that it's already activated. Uh, so if it is not activated in your system, please go ahead and activate it. And then the next thing you would have to do is uh, you would have to go to this OData service and see if this OData service is activated, SD underscore SOFA. Again, in my system, it's already activated, but I will double check. Uh, so if it is not activated in your system, uh, go ahead and activate it as well. So the transaction code that you would use is uh, IWFND. Uh, main service uh, so I should have that and let me go ahead and check for this service um, so it is uh, star sd underscore sofa star and it should be already activated yes there is a green symbol right here so it is already activated and then the next thing I need to do is um, I need to go ahead and uh, provide uh, the roles uh, so to access the OData service. Uh, so in my case, uh, I will go into PFCG. So again, this is all, all the stuff that I'm doing in the front end server. So I've already checked if uh, the OData service is activated. I already checked if the SAP UI5 application is activated. Now I'm going to give myself authorization for the OData service in the front end server. Uh, so to do that, I would have to go to PFCG. And I already have uh, this role that I'm using. So I'll go ahead and continue to use this role. So I hit change. Now what I need to do is I need to give myself authorization to run this OData service on the back end. So change this into authorization default. And here what I would need to do is I would need to choose starter service. I'm pretty sure by now you are all aware of this. So IWSG for the front end server. So I choose IWSG and then I search for this uh, SDSOFA OData service. 
and I see that so let me select it and say OK and let me copy this and let me save this and I would also have to generate my authorizations so it's turned red so go into authorizations it needs to be green and uh, click change authorization data say OK and then you can generate the authorization defaults and then you can save it and then you can exit and then you can generate again and uh, save okay so all the steps that I need to do on the front-end server I have done so far um, so this uh, user belongs to this role the demo to user uh, so he has access to the OData service at least from the front-end side of it uh, so now because I am using a hub deployment now I would have to go to the back-end server so this is the first time I have to go to the back-end server and I have to create the same user on the back-end so I would have to create a demo to user on the back-end and I would have to give them RFC authorizations so that uh, the RFC connection works and then I would also have to activate the ICF services for the UI5 uh, I don't have to do that uh, but I need to give them authorizations for the OData service okay so let's do that on the back end uh, so on the back end so let me go to the back end server okay so on the back end server first I need to create the user so this is my backend server I go SU01 so I'm going to create a user called demo2 so this is the same user that exists in the front end so you need the same user on the back end as well uh, the password can be different but in my case I'm going to keep it the same password okay so I have created the same user on the backend now what I need to do is I need to assign this user uh, roles for RFC so that it can connect to the front end using RFC and also access to the OData service so for that I will go ahead use the thing PFCG and I'll create a use a role called the ZS demo so it's going to be a single role so I will create this role and here I need to add authorizations to the RFC so let me add them manually so go down here uh, change authorization data and uh, do not apply templates so I will go manually and here I'm going to choose S underscore RFC and I also need to give S underscore RFC ACL so these two authorizations and objects I need to give uh, for simplicity's sake I will go ahead and give them full authorizations uh, so here I would go and uh, give uh, full authorizations to connect to the front end now if you're using embedded then you may not have to do all these things because they all reside in the same system but because this is a hub deployment uh, you have a separate front-end system and a back-end system uh, so I will go ahead for the RFC ACL as well and do the same steps for the RFC ACL now there is a document on uh, what steps the help SAP help document provides you with uh, the exact permissions that you need to provide so I will show you the link for that uh, but in my case for simplicity's sake I am giving all access so uh, this is not something that you should be doing in production though okay just two more or three more to go so full authorizations for this and full authorizations for the RFC info and also full authorizations for the activate
Okay, now that I've done that, I will go ahead and uh, generate this profile. And so at this moment, I have given him RFC rights for this end user. And what I need to do now is also give this user access to the uh, OData service as well. So here I go into the menu and I know I need the authorization default for uh, I. So choose starter service. But in this case, because it's the backend, I need to choose IWSV. So this is the backend, and I can search for SD underscore SO star, and I will go ahead and select SD underscore SOFA, because if I look in my Fury Apps library, uh, my OData service is SD underscore SOFA. So I choose this, say OK, and I copy this, and I save this. And once I save this, my authorization turns uh, red. So what I'll do is I'll go back to this authorization and I will regenerate it. I will save, exit, generate again. And for my user, I'm going to assign this to the demo to user. So now my demo to user has access to RFC and he also has access to the OData service as well. User comparison, let me save this first and let me complete the comparison. Okay, and save. So what have we done so far? So we have, uh, let me go back to the PowerPoint slide. So on the front end server, we made sure the OData services are activated the ICF services are activated and then we gave the user access to the OData service using PFCG. On the back end, we did pretty much the same thing, ignore this second line. Uh, we gave him RFC authorizations, we gave him full access and then we gave him authorizations for the OData service. Now there is a link that I did want to show you guys. Uh, so if you go to this link here, uh, it will show you what uh, the front end uh, server uh, uh, roles need to be and what the back end server role needs to be. So especially this, if you go to assign RFC authorization to user, it gives you the exact uh, uh, transactions that you need to provide. You don't have to give everything to the user like we did. Okay. So I will put the link in the YouTube video. So now, now that the user has enough rights, let's go back to the track sales order application. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clear the console. And let me do go at this time. So at this time, uh, it should, so there's no, no error messages, but there's no data. Uh, that's probably because there is no data. So let me see, uh, let me do it again. Give me one second. And let me do a go. Yeah, there's no data. So if I look in this batch thing, so we are making a call to this OData service, SDSOFA. So this is the OData service that we just gave access to. And in my response, uh, so everything looks good, uh, the count is zero. So there are no results. Uh, there's no data in the backend. Uh, but otherwise, everything looks good. Uh, you are able to see the application functioning. Thank you.